What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Brian. This is the Hog Shooter Hot Rods channel. And in today's video, we're going to put a set of these disc brakes on our eight and a half inch 10 bolt rear end that we're building for the 35 Chevy project. Kit came from Speedway. Super simple kit. There's a bunch of them out there. I think you can probably even adapt stuff from out of the salvage yard to do this it was cheap enough and they had it available so we ordered one and i've got things getting uh, set up here so hey why don't i back up a little bit and show you guys what we're gonna do kind of like hot rodders christmas here you got a stainless steel brake line comes with the tab to weld to your housing or you could always just zip tie it, I guess. A whole bunch of shims in case you have some misalignment. The caliper bracket, the two slider bolts, a set of brake pads, a caliper, and these are Speedway's own casting of a metric car caliper. So pretty easy to come up with replacements if you need them. They have the right and left cast in them. Then a brake rotor that's drilled for multiple brake patterns or bolt patterns so you can see i just took and painted the very ends of my housing my axles everything so they wouldn't rust and then um, i found the center of where the leaves will bolt so that I can figure out where I can put my brake line and it's not going to get in the way of the U-bolts when they go on because I want to weld that tab on before I paint everything. This kit is super simple to bolt on. Um, I already have this side all mocked up. So when our caliper is installed on here, you can see it's not even. Well, it doesn't matter too much because this caliper can float back and forth. But with that little step in there, you can see it's holding this from going all the way over. And what that's doing is it's making my brand new brake pads where they won't fit up in here. And I believe if that were gone, you can see there's just, it just lacks just, just that little bit. So we're going to, I measured it and this side was 1.277 from the rotor surface and one two. Two seven from the rotor surface. So that's 50 thousandths difference. When I put the dial indicator on this rotor and turned it, there's about 20 thousandths of variance there. So with that amount of variance, I think we're right. We're close enough to go ahead and bolt this thing up. I mean, these brake pads are going to wear um, and they're going to wear in true with that rotor. And then your sliders are mounted in rubber. So you have a little bit of give there. Um, if we were way off, we might go ahead and use those shims. Something that I did have to do was I flipped the brackets over and I put the little standoffs to the inside. So that bracket is actually bolted directly to the housing flange. When I had it flipped the other way, I was going to have to grind almost all these off to get both brake pads in. With it set up like this, the caliper is pretty much centered on that rotor. So like I said, really easy setup. They give you torque specs. They give you a set of instructions that are, that are close. So, hey, let's bolt this other side on here real quick so you guys can see that. And we'll get these installed. Super.
to what I said, super easy to put on. I'm trying to decide if I want this brake line mounted here, up here, back here. Um, it does have to have enough room to be able to move as this caliper moves back and forth. So you want to keep that in mind. I mean, I've got plenty of movement if I mount it just right in the middle of where the U-bolts will be, maybe up a little bit higher on the rear end. Um, then I still have this brake line clip here uh, that comes on the rear end. The other side, the brake line will be super short because it's going to come from here. And then I have my center rubber flexible hose. Don't forget that, guys. You got to have that. And I'm going to bolt that dude on right here to the factory bracket. Probably straighten that up a little bit. And uh, bolt it in there. Run my lines. And hey, we'll be in business. Um, then I can take these pieces back off, finish painting this housing. And we're ready to put it under the car. That's awesome. So I really appreciate you guys and watching my videos. I really do. Covers are made where the brake line has to come out the bottom. I could go in and grind out a section on the side of it, but after looking, I decided I'm just going to deal with it pointing down toward that housing. It does kind of keep it out of the way, but we got to have enough slack here for movement as these brake pads wear. And you are only talking about moving maybe three eighths of an inch if you wore the brake pads completely down. So it's not a whole, whole lot. Um, this red mark that represents the center of the leaf springs on the car. So I have my, my metal tab that they send. It's squared off. I did take it and cope it so that it fits on the housing it's going to kind of stick up off there a little ways but i don't think that'll be a big deal i mean we'll have the brake line connection here then it's going to run across the housing it'll be clamped in here come up go over have another clamp in the center of the upper part of the housing come over and go into our rubber line here and I left the factory mount on this because it has a nice bolt hole in it to secure it. We'll be able to get that in. You can see uh, the description said that that was a T fitting, um, but it's almost like a Y. It comes out there at an angle. I think that'll be fine. We'll get it uh, all figured out when we start plumbing our brake lines. But right now I've got to get this bracket tacked in here a simple install as you saw i mean there's a minimum amount of bolts here i did have one stud that was broken off in this housing that i'm going to have to replace or this axle that i am going to have to replace and i probably want to put all of them on there um, just to check the other side was good i'm really wanting to verify that i don't have a bent axle because of uh, how bad this housing was bent um, I really think it was just from the poor welding job that they had done. As you can see, um, I did on this side have this bracket facing the opposite direction. And that uh, the directions would have you put this bracket on the other side with these standoffs facing your flange. And, you know, I think every kit, every application is going to be a little bit different. So you're just going to have to look at it and make sure that you're making the best choices for what you've got. They do suggest that you grind those to even this bracket out. Um, I'm not sure how much off you can have that bracket. I, I think that we're well within what the brake pads, how they're going to wear, how they're going to um, be affected because this, uh, this caliper bracket is mounted with little rubber o-rings so it's got a little play there um, so there you go brake lines on you want to make sure you put your crush washers in there i don't have anything tied on here at the moment um as i'm still mock up i will end up pulling these things apart these calipers have some kind of coating on them but i'll probably clean that off and just give them a little primer and paint uh, just to keep them from rusting all over the whole thing. These brackets are coated 
the bolts are coated. I'm not worried about them. It's just the calipers. And I'll have to coat this housing too once I get done welding this. Um, I will have to come back and weld my perches on, but we've got to have this all bolted in and some weight in the car to get our pinion angle set right. So I don't even want to try to weld anything onto this housing as far as locating the rear end um, pinion and everything. All right, so I do have a little bracket holder here. Uh, this is uh, from Stronghand Tools. It's like a, a little mini version and it works really good. It's got these super stout magnets on there so I can hold that and then this goes down. I can slide it right up in there where I want it. Look at this brake line. Make sure we got uh, plenty of room there for movement of that thing. I think we'll be good there. Set it in and tack weld this bad boy in place. All right, so a couple of good hot tacks. That'll hold that sucker in there. Want to let it cool off before I poke this in and leave it there, but um, that little holder keeps everything true to this housing. That's going to be really nice. So we'll uh, go ahead and kind of think about it a little bit before we fully weld it. I So we got that uh, stuck on there. Yep, it's going to stay. So now, set you all right back here. We've got to take our line, move it around. I put that rubber plug in the end of it to keep stuff from going in there. And then we're going to use this little horseshoe clip to kind of hold that thing in and don't really have to put it in hardcore right now so here's my dilemma i have this length brake line which is almost long as the whole rear it is as long as the whole rear diff um that's the only one i've got i don't have one shorter so dang it brake line's pretty cheap though so We've got to bend it probably out, down, along here, and then, I don't know, right through here, up and around. So, hey, let's do it.
guys. So I did get this uh, brake line bin up here. It is super short little brake line. It's the angle's not quite perfect for our fitting here, but you know, these brake lines are really small. We can kind of tweak and make small adjustments there. I did want to show kind of, I have it tightened down on this end. So it's as far this way as it'll go. And then I just have it bent where I want it. And the termination point here, we know it's going to seat inside of this fitting, but I need to give myself just a little extra for my um, double flare is on a brake line. Um, we want this flare that is folded over onto the inside. That gives you strength. It won't crack at the end. So your brake lines work out. And I mean, you can go like this came from the parts store a long time ago. Um, and you can buy brake lines in various lengths, but, uh, well, you guys know you can't get exactly the length that you want. So you're going to have to do some flaring. Now I have just uh, a kit here. It's got all the tools that I need. Um, got the piece to hold the line, the piece to smash the crimp, and then it has these little small pieces, one for each size so that you can do your double flare. And I'm gonna take you over here and show you how to do it. I've got a, a little different tool. Um, this one made in the USA, got a little longer lever on it so that you can get some good pressure on there. This one's designed just to use a wrench. Um, I bought this whole kit just so I'd have this set of double flare pieces quite a while back. So uh, let's get it done. All right, so over here in my vise, you know, they make really nice flaring tools and I'm not advertising this as being nice. This is what uh, has been out there for many, many years. So to set this up, uh, first I always make sure and I, I just use like a quarter inch drill bit and I chamfer the inside of that brake line itself. Then I use my uh, double flare part of the tool and I hold it up here and I make sure I'm really close to having that brake line protrude the same thickness as uh, that little piece is and what I've found is if I'm just a little bit shorter and I mean I'm talking probably like 20,000 shorter um, with my amount of stick out that I get a good flare pretty much every time there are times uh, you can screw up and you just have to start over. Don't try to, don't try to fix it or cheat it when you're working with brake lines. Um, also, before you get to this stage, make sure that you have the fitting on the other side. And I did put this little uh, coil on there to kind of protect against abrasion for my brake lines. Now, I get this thing super tight. <clears throat> this is the part about this flaring tool that uh, makes me want to buy a nicer one. <clears throat> is that you got to suck it down as tight as possible. <clears throat> and yeah, I'm even going to grab a pair of vice grips. I'm going to stick this tool, you know, it says 3 16 on it. It says 3 16 here. So just a little basic reading there. Make sure you got the right stuff. Then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to twist this. And I'm going to have to 
back that out because I just finished making another flare and then try to get it as centered as possible and get that little button sitting square with the top of that line it's pretty much the key to getting a good flare every time so you guys having a good day today I hope you're having an awesome day today it is warmer weather but it is super windy here at hog shooter america so uh, give it a little extra clamping force there and then it's just as simple as rolling this thing down and as you roll it down you just get her down there pretty close don't squish it as hard as you possibly can. No need to King Kong it. And then you got to get that button back out of there. And uh, it squeezes and crimps itself around it. I've done quite a few flares with this set. And it's starting to get some burrs on this inside of this thing where it doesn't just like to come out real easy. I know, not the best use for a pocket knife, but hey. That's what I've got here close, and I want to get you guys a brake line made so you can see what's going on. Come on. So, yeah. All right. So, we're looking pretty good. I usually check to make sure that this, it kind of looks like a little bubble there, and that the hole is pretty much centered up in that line. If it's not centered up in that line, you, yeah. Unfortunately, you might as well just cut it off and start over because uh, nobody likes leaky brake lines, do they? I know I don't. Now I'm going to loosen my vice grips up because I may need to move this little clamp. And once you get that initial bubble in there without that brake line sliding, you're good. Um, stainless line is the worst. It's really hard to flare. A real test of your tools when you go to flare it and you know, this doesn't take a like King Kong amount of force just be easy on it fellas and there we go so <clears throat> you can see we're looking good oh now if I can loosen this don't you hate it when you tighten stuff as tight as you can and then you're like who tightened that up I can't get it loose so there we go we got our fitting comes up it hits it looks like it is pretty close to being centered in there got our little spring on there so hey we're good let's put it on the differential all right so i'm back over here and i'm gonna cheat and just have this thing all weird out of position and get that line in there and then, wow, I'm going to try to get this line in there now. Short break line must be like the worst. Double cheat. I'm going to take the braided line out of its little keeper here so I can change my angle a little bit, get things lined up. Worst thing you can do here, guys, is cross thread something. Cross threading might be as good as Loctite one time, but it, that does not apply to your brake lines. Definitely don't want to have cross-threaded stuff when we're doing this. Um, yeah, that's nice. So, I just kind of work it around here. Yeah, I might have gave a little bit too much extra length there. But as my fitting screws in there, it's going to pull in a little tighter. There, we're close. Come on. Come on. And action. Nope, I have the clip. Yeah. You know, sometimes things just want to fight. <clears throat> yeah, and sometimes they don't win. So, Ooh, sorry about shaking you so bad, fellas. There you go. You got your lines going into this fitting. Here we are. This will mount onto the chassis of the vehicle so it can move up and down with the suspension got my fancy zip tie right here 
kind of got this line bent around going connected there okay well i would love to be able to leak test this but we're going to have to have it in the car and there's a lot more to do on that chassis i am going to go ahead and prime and paint this differential housing and that's going to involve taking some stuff back apart i'm not going to bore you with all that i just wanted to show uh, the installation of this disc brake system and you know if you already had brake lines you would have to shorten them and reflare them i just went ahead and put brand new stuff on this because i don't know how old those other brake lines were and i uh <laughs> brakes are an important part of the automotive equation so at any rate fellas hey i truly appreciate each and every one of you taking time to watch my videos um, please like subscribe comment about it let me know what you want to see um, I'm, I'm willing to do a lot of different stuff as long as it's kind of automotive related on this channel. So at any rate, we'll catch you on the next.